Welcome back to my garage. You can buy a lot of go fast parts and you can dive into some pretty tricky port work. But here's my list of 10 ways you can be faster for free. Or very cheap at least. Cheap. Down jet to the edge of detonation. If we're going to make power, you can't stay on the safe side. Advance or retard ignition timing. Both ways might increase power. Go in baby steps and be careful. Advance ignition timing too much and detonation comes knocking on your door. Make your exhaust system Stinger IDE smaller. On most performance exhaust systems, the Stinger ID is too large. That's probably because they don't want their customers to blow up their bikes too often. But uh, if you insert a uh, restriction, that should increase power. Go in baby steps. As with uh, the previous mods, this too will lead to detonation if you go too far. Be careful. Run a tighter squish gap. The squish gap is the gap between the piston and the squish band in the head when the piston is at top dead center. A good rule of thumb here is 1% of the stroke. Ideally you want the piston to just almost touch the head at peak RPM. If you're up for some destructive testing, you can tighten the squish cap until the piston touches the head, then go back a tiny bit. What you want here is no gap at all at peak RPM. Because if there's no gap, there is no trapped mixture, and if there's no trapped mixture, there is no mixture that can detonate in the squish band. You can tighten your squish band by either sanding down the head or the cylinder. This is slow. A faster way is to ask a friend with some uh, machinist equipment to mill it or turn it down for you. This will increase power and will actually reduce detonation. Check for and eliminate any restrictions in your performance exhaust system. Some of them are really bad from factory, with the header protruding into the chamber and lumpy welds and maybe some overlap between the sections and even restrictions inside the chamber. Take a close look, see if you can find any restrictions or any uneven stuff in there and remove it. The pipe should be clean on the inside with distinct changes between the sections. A good way to check this is to look for spot welds. If there are spot welds here, there's probably a restriction plate or some sound dampening stuff or something in there. Straighten and shorten your intake. Most probably your intake is not near long enough to be tuned to your RPM anyway. By making it shorter, you raise the resonant frequency above your RPM range and you eliminate the chance for it screwing up your power, your flow. Port match. Matching the ports in your cylinder to the ports in your case. Some engines are really bad from factory and if you have installed a kit you are probably off. This is not dangerous at all, just good practice. Raise your cylinder and thereby your port durations with a spacer. This should increase power, just remember to take off the same amount from the top so you don't increase your squish clearance. Remember to do some calculations and measure the ports beforehand so you know where you're at and where you're going. This is by no means a substitute for a good port job, but it will increase power and it is much less work and much less hard. Run RC fuel, methanol and nitromethane. Seriously, this works and it's not that bad as uh, people will have it to be. Uh, go watch my videos on the moped on methanol and nitromethane and See for yourself, get ready to upjet a lot. Make sure your fuel system is up to it and be prepared for insane fuel consumption. And by all means, go rich. Okay, thanks for watching. Go watch my other videos for more in-depth stuff and uh, the moped on methanol and uh, more port timing stuff and porting and uh, do-it-yourself dyno and a bunch of different stuff. Okay, please subscribe. See you next time.